Well, hello and welcome everybody. Hey, this video, it's a lesson on quadratic equations and why, when you graph them, they make parabolas. Well, this is our first in a series on quadratic equations. We're going to go through the entire unit, trying to create questions for each one that get resolved. And as we explore those questions, you get all of the understanding you need to be masterful with quadratic equations. So this is our first one. If you're a student and you're learning this, go ahead and pause the video. There's some notes linked in the description. They're aligned with this lesson. I wrote them exactly for this video. can help you. So you can help you to learn, help you to remember. So go ahead and pause the video and grab those now. Now, our goal for this lesson is we want to know why, when you graph a quadratic equation, it makes a parabola. We need to learn about all the major points about a parabola and how they're connected to the quadratic equation. That's why this is going to be the foundation for the entire unit. All right, so on the graph right now, you see a quadratic equation, and you see it being graphed, and it makes a parabola. So to explore how that works and why that is, we need to make sure we understand what a parabola is, what a quadratic equation is, then we connect, can connect the two, we can see why quadratics make parabolas. So to start, I went to ChatGPT and I said, hey ChatGPT, what is a parabola? Well, here's what ChatGPT spit out. It said that a parabola is a curve in math that's symmetrical and it's a U-shaped curve and it's made by a quadratic equation, which is AX squared plus BX plus C, where A, B, and C are constants and X and Y are the variables. All right, well, let's dive into what ChatGPT says here and see how it's doing. So we're going to start off with the first part, why it says it's a U-shaped curve. We're going to see why they say that, how accurate it is. So first of all, a parabola is not a U. It's also not a V. Here's why it's not a U. A U, the sides of a U, they're parallel, and the sides of a parabola, the arms, whatever you want to call them, they are definitely not parallel. These are parallel over here for a U and for a, for a parabola, no. Now, a lot of the time, students think that a parabola is actually a V. Not that either. V's, uh, their sides, their arms are straight. These are not straight. They're curved everywhere, even if it doesn't look like it. They are. If you zoom in, they're curved. Now, another problem with the V is that the bottom of a V comes to a sharp point, and a parabola is curved. It's called smooth and continuous, and it's just like that. So it's not a point at the bottom. It's nice and smooth. So a parabola it's curved everywhere. It is symmetrical, like both a U and a V. They're very symmetrical, but the sides are curved everywhere, and the bottom does not have a, a point, right? So no three points in a parabola. No three consecutive points are collinear. All right, so we know it's not a U, right? But all right, we understand what they're trying to say. Let's talk about the next part. It says that if A is positive, A comes from AX squared, right? If A is positive, the parabola goes up, and if it's negative, it goes down. That is absolutely true. Let's show you. Check this out. I've got two quadratics over here, X squared minus 3X minus 4. When you graph that one, it goes up. That's what we call up. The other one, A is negative 1, negative X squared minus or plus 3X minus 4. Then that one goes down like that in green. So if A is positive, right, greater than 0 is positive, the parabola goes up. If A is negative, that means less than 0. Numbers less than 0 are negative. If a is negative, the parabola goes down. So we're going to give chat GPT an F over here, maybe a D. I don't know. I see what they're saying. And we're going to give them a check mark here. However, they're missing all the good stuff. So the major points of a parabola. Well, you've got quite a few. You've got a vertex, a y-intercept, two x-intercepts. Let's talk about all those. Let's start with the vertex. The vertex is the minimum value. It's the endpoint in the range. It's where the whole thing turns around. Now, one thing to remember about the vertex is that if A is positive, that means the thing is the whole parabola is going up, which makes the vertex the minimum, the smallest output value. Whereas if A is negative, right? A is less than zero, then the parabola goes down like we just learned. And in that case, the vertex, it's the maximum. All right. Now, through the vertex, there's a line of symmetry. Parabolas have symmetry. So you can see right here, this parabola is growing and it's equal distance as it keeps going from this line of symmetry. The line of symmetry it passes vertically right through the vertex and every horizontal pair of points are equal distance from that line of symmetry. The line of symmetry would be the midpoint. So as you can see here, the distance from this x-intercept to the line of symmetry is exactly the same as 
from this x-intercept to the line of symmetry. And that's true for any pair of horizontal points, equal distance from the line of symmetry. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the y-intercept. There's always one vertex, and there's also always one y-intercept. And the y-intercept, of course, is where the graph crosses the y-axis. Now, the x-intercepts does get a little tricky, and that's actually where we spend the bulk of our time in the unit is on the x-intercepts. There could be two, one, or zero of them. In this case, there are two. All right, so now let's take a look at changing all these different quadratics. So what I've done is I've created a little video. You can see how the graph's major points change as I change the values of A, B, and C in a quadratic equation. So I've got some questions for you. Can you describe what happens when there aren't any x-intercepts? And when is it that the vertex and the y-intercept are the same? Uh, when is it there's only one x-intercept? And what happens to the vertex in that situation? And are the y-intercept and x-intercepts ever the same? So I'll go ahead and I'll show you the video here one more time. And I'll just be quiet and play some beautiful music. pretty cool, right? We're going to leave these questions unanswered for today, and we will revisit them periodically through this entire series, okay? So to wrap up what a parabola is, in our case right here, when we're talking about quadratics, it's a curved shape that has some key features. Now, parabolas can have some other applications, but for where we're at, the vertex and the line of symmetry give the shape its structure. So the vertex is the minimum or the maximum. The line of symmetry goes right through it, and the line of symmetry is the midpoint from each arm. You could actually fold the entire parabola over the line of symmetry, and each arm would line up with the other. And that's pretty cool right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and dive into talking about what a quadratic is. All right, so you should be pretty familiar with quadratics if you're already taking this because you did a unit already on some polynomials where you learned how to multiply and you learned how to factor, right? So on the screen right now, you're going to see a whole bunch of random examples of quadratics. Here's the deal. Roughly speaking, a quadratic has a, an exponent. The biggest exponent is 2. Now, it gets a little more complicated than that, but if you're taking Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, that's all you need to know for now. We can, well, clarify some of those other instances later. Now, ax squared plus bx plus c, that is called standard form. And if you remember, a and b and c, those are just the parameters. a is the leading coefficient. That's the thing multiplying the x squared. So here, a is 2. And over here, a would be just 1. Now, b is the coefficient for the term x to the power of 1. Like, you won't see an exponent, right? So over here, b is negative 3, and over here with y equals x squared, well, you don't see an x, so b is 0. And here, c is the constant term. It's equal to 3, and over here with x squared, well, you don't see anything, so it is again 0. All of these are standard form. There's another form we're going to learn about in the next lesson. It's called vertex form. All of these others our vertex form. All right, so we talked about a parabola. We talked about quadratics. Now let's connect the dots. Let's see how, or maybe why, quadratic equations make parabolas when you graph them. So let's do this one right here, right? We're going to see where, why this graph, why this shape comes from that function right there. So let's go ahead and graph one. We're going to graph one that's a little simpler than this for now. We'll get to this kind of stuff later. But for now, you know, math is like dating. you got to take your time. You don't want to rush in and make a dumb mistake, get your feelings hurt. All your friends are going to laugh at you, tell you I told you so. So let's be, let's be careful, right? So let's start off with what a point is. On a graph, a point, well, that's an a input and an output. The x is the input. can be anything you want. You plug it into the equation, and then you find out what the output is. So for example, if you had f of x or y equals x squared minus 8x plus 12, and you wanted to know what is y when x is 0, this is how you write it, right? So you replace x as the input with the 0, and the way we figure that out is we just take that 0 and we plug it in. We replace both of those x's with 0. So we just put 0 there, 0 squared minus 8 times 0 
plus 12. And just do the math. 0 squared is 0. 8 times 0 is 0. So we can say that f of 0 is 12. Now, this is not f times 0. This means what is the equation equal to when the input is 0? And we're saying it's equal to 12. So we would know that this point right here would be 0, 12. All right, that's pretty cool. Good to know, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put that there. We know that that's a y-intercept because, number one, the x-coordinate is 0, and number two, you can see when you graph it, it is on the x-axis. So that's how you know if something's a y-intercept, x is 0. All right, so let's let's talk about some other numbers right here. We're not going to do random t-charts today. Um, in fact, on the practice I made, I went ahead and selected all the X's on purpose with the idea that we're going to be discovering where these points are, the five major or the major points, right? So let's go ahead and plug in two. So F of two. So what is Y when X is two? That's what this means. So you just go ahead and replace the X's, right? Eight, or X squared minus eight X plus 12. So you just replace the X's with two and then just do the math, right? So two squared is four. 8, negative 8 times 2 is 16. We can go ahead and rearrange those so we can add before we subtract. And 12 and 4 is 16. 16 minus 16 is, of course, 0. So f of 2 is 0. All right, so f of 2 is 0. That means it's going to be right here on the x-axis. So that is an x-intercept. And the reason we know it's an x-intercept, y is equal to 0. All right, now let's check about what happens when we plug in 4. All right, so once again, f of 4, that means what does y equal when x is 4? So that means we take this 4 and we replace both of these x's here with it. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got both of those x's. We replace them with 4's. 4 squared is 16. 4 times negative 8 is negative 32. Let's go ahead and add those together. That makes 28 minus 32, which is negative 4. So I know that when x is 4, y is negative 4, and that is right here on the graph. Now, as of right now, we don't actually know if that's the vertex or not. It could be, but maybe not. We need some more information first, so we're not going to label what that is just yet. We're going to leave it blank right here. Let's go ahead and plug in 6. By now, I think you know the drill. Plugging in 6, doing the math, you get 6, 0. So we took 6, replaced the x's with it, just squared it, multiplied, and then added all these things together, and you get 0. So 0 is right here, and we know that that is an x-intercept as well because y is equal to 0. So now, we know that this is the line of symmetry, and we know this is our shape, this is our parabola. The reason we know that's true, and the reason we know this is the vertex, is because the distance between this x-intercept and the line of symmetry is the same as it is on the other side. They're both 2, and so that tells us that we know that this is the minimum. Uh, we know that's the minimum. That's where it turns around. It's right in the middle. That is the vertex, and it's the horizontal midpoint of or it's the midpoint of any horizontal pair of numbers. So like the y-intercept up here, its distance to the line of symmetry is the same as from the line of symmetry to the point over here, which would be the reflection point from the y-intercept. Pretty cool, right? All right, so now let's try this one right here. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to see why all of this works the way it does. So what we're doing is we're going through and I'm showing you how I plug in all the numbers into the function x squared minus 9 and we get all of our points. So we get 3, 0 because 3 squared minus 9 is 0 and we've got 4, 7 because 4 squared minus 9 is 7. So we've got all of our points like this on our graph of x squared minus 9. You see negative 4, you plug in negative 4, you get 16 minus 9 is 7. Same thing happens over here, you plug in positive 4. And that's kind of the key, do you see? When you square a negative number, it's the same as having squared the positive number. So that's where the symmetry is coming from. Do you see how all that works right there? And then we get these outputs that are exactly the same as well. So when we plug in negative 4 or positive 4, we get the same exact output because those are equal distance from the midline. That's how it works. The reason that we've getting, we're getting this shape is because if you square a negative number, it's the same as if you square the positive number. All right, so a couple takeaways, right? The line of symmetry. It's the midpoint from a horizontal pair of points. It's exactly in the middle. It's the line of reflection that goes right through there. That's what the, that's what the line of symmetry is. It's the midpoint. And 
it keeps everything kind of just squared away and beautiful. And as you move away from the vertex, this distance gets wider and wider. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Another diagram of it here. And you got to remember, though, as you square the input, right, uh, as you square the negative or the positive of the input, that distance keeps increasing. It keeps going up faster and faster. They're the same values, the negative squared and the positive squared. Pretty cool. That's exactly how they look right here. And this is why the line of symmetry really keeps everything structured and nice and organized and, and beautiful. All right. So now, I'll ask you a couple questions before we end up, right? Can you fill out something like this? I know we just did this one, but could you do this on your own? There's a practice one. It's there in the guided notes. Can you fill it out, find all the major points, and label your graph? I hope you can. Hey, I hope this, this lesson helped you to learn. I hope this video was useful and uh, maybe even entertaining. If it was, I'd really like to hear from you how it went. Thumbs up, all that kind of good old-fashioned stuff. And until next time, well, have a great day.